I went into that meeting. It's the assemblies of God. Too many, too many preachers. The meeting, the meeting was late. The meeting was late. They said we don't have time to pray for people to receive the Holy Spirit. I was 13 years old. I got hold of all those leaders sitting there. You cannot go for your lunch. I will not be here this afternoon. I demand you pray and I receive this Holy Spirit. You men, come on, no lunch. Pray, pray. So they put me in a room. And 20 of these men prayed over me. All the leaders of the Assemblies of God in Britain. Nothing happened. Their minds were on lunch. I was, a, I was just a 13 year old boy. Nothing happened. One man saw my heart. He said, forget lunch. He opened the scripture. He showed me what God says. He laid his hands on me. And as he laid his hands on me, the whole of heaven opened. The roof came off the building. The whole of heaven came down. Thousands of angels. Fire came down from heaven. Power came down. And I was filled and filled and filled with the Holy Ghost. And I was baptized 100% with fire and power and the glory of God. Hallelujah. I received the power, the anointing and the fire now. But that's not enough. 99% is not enough. And I have become like Moses. Everywhere I go. Why am I here? I'm looking for the fire. Why do I go to Russia? I'm looking for the fire. Why? I want to walk into the fire. I'm not satisfied to be baptized with fire. I want to take my whole life, my whole body, everything, and I'm going to walk into that fire. That fire. Wow. <laughs> I'll never get enough fire. I'll never get enough Holy Spirit. If you've got more of the Holy Spirit here than we've got in England, I'll come here, I'll be back, I'm coming back. <laughs> Do you understand? Yes, but you've got to read Leviticus chapter 6. No, 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 it's not there. Look, I'm not going to read this from the Bible. It's in my heart. Come on, it's in my heart. Leviticus chapter 6. What was the command given to the priests in the temple? Set the altar. Put the sacrifice. Light the fire. Light the fire. And God commanded the priests. When you put the fire on the altar, that fire must never, ever, ever go out. I meet so many old men like me. <laughs> and the fire's gone out. <laughs> 
you know, when you invited me here, you were thinking, this man is 86 years old. He can talk about the past. But the fire's gone out. But uh, no, 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 I'm burning more with yes, fire now, now than like ever in my life. The fire, the power, the glorious fire, the anointing is more powerful. Day after day, the fire will never, ever, ever go out. I'll tell you, I, I've, I've seen more miracles, I think, than any living man. Two years ago, well, no, a bit more than that. Let me first tell you about Siberia. Yesterday I told you that in Susuman, Oh, many years ago, God emptied the whole hospital. I didn't. I, I only prayed with three men. But God cleared all the sick people out of the hospital. So a year later, I went back. But the Orthodox priest was so angry with me. They wouldn't let me rent a stadium. They, when I tried to rent a theater, the priest came in. He said to the owner of the theater, if you let these men come in here, I shall whip you and I shall close your theater. The priest looked at me. I, I shall drive you out of town. And if you preach to anybody, I'll send the Cossacks, Cossacky. Yes, I'd Bolosh Cossacky. They're in the church. Oh, yes, the Cossacky, they are in the church. Oh, I know, I know a bit about the church. <laughs> and he said, We shall. Beat up and destroy all your converts. What could I do? I said, Holy Spirit, tell me what to do. I went straight to the local television station. I said, you know me. I want to speak on television now. He said, how long do you want? I said, give me 30 minutes and I'll change your town. He said, okay, that'll cost you $20. <laughs> I paid him $20. They broadcast my message live on the main TV channel. Calling the city to repent. The Orthodox priest was so angry. He went to the TV station. He said, You let David Hathaway speak. I demand that I speak. They said, no, everybody knows you're a thief, you're a liar, you're immoral, nobody will listen to you. <laughs> so they didn't let him speak. <laughs> then what was I going to do? I said, that priest will not stop us evangelizing. 
We took all our equipment, set it up in the center of town, on the steps leading to the Communist Party headquarters. And we began the meeting. Now something happens, the only time this has ever happened in my life. The Orthodox priest called a shaman you understand? And this shaman was coming down the street. He was cursing me. He was calling the rain. And as he walked down the main street towards me, he created a big storm, a thunderstorm. And it followed him down the street with the wind until he came to about three meters in front of me. And then I said, oh God, this has to stop. I called on the power of God. In the name of Jesus, shaman, I break the curse, I break your power, and in Jesus' name, I command you to go. Instantly, lightning, a flash of lightning, hit the shaman, threw him on the floor. No, 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 no. He got up, ran back, and the storm went back with him. And the sky was clear. Do you understand the power of God? But to show you the power of God, just recently, two years ago. Well, it's one and a half, about one and a half years ago. And I was evangelizing in Israel. You know it's against the law to evangelize in Israel. You know this. But whose law? But whose law? Not my law. Not God's law. Man's law. Okay. I've been evangelizing there for many, many years. But we decided that we would rent one of the largest stadiums in Israel at Kisaria. You know, Kisaria. In the Bible, where Paul went to prison, uh, there he sailed to Rome, and where Peter was called to preach to the Gentiles. So we rent the whole stadium, seating 40,000, uh, 4,000. 4, but we were there for one week in advance. To pray that God would give us the victory. And what we learned three days before we were to be in the stadium. The Orthodox Jews tried to stop the stadium. They got an order from the court, the legal court, an order, a command, 
to stop me renting the stadium. The stadium belongs to the government. So my lawyer, who's a friend, he went to the Israeli government. Will, are you going to allow these men to stop David? And I was praying. There were 30 of us praying. And the foreign, Israeli foreign minister, who knows me, said no. We know David. He's a good man. He loves Israel. Don't stop him. So the next day, the Orthodox Jews did the next step. We had rented more than 100 buses to bring people from all over Israel, not believers, Russian Holocaust survivors, some Armenian, some Ukrainian, and we were bringing 4,000 of them from all over Israel. And I can remember that night. And I was praying. And I was praying two things. I'd just heard the news that all our buses were cancelled. The Orthodox Jews said, if you uh, rent these buses to David Hathaway, we will destroy your company. And I was crying out to God. Oh God, you have never been defeated in the thousands of years since the day of creation throughout the whole of the Bible. You are a God of war. You have never been defeated in battle. And you will not be defeated now. In Jesus' name, give us the victory. What happened? The unbelievers rented the buses themselves. Wow, when we couldn't, the unbelievers were so determined to come to the gospel. They rented the buses. But then the Orthodox Jews hadn't finished. The meeting was to be held on the Sabbath, but we hold it at the end of the Sabbath. You understand? The moment Shabbat is finished, we have our meeting. So the Orthodox Jews said, we will go into that stadium. The stadium is right on the, the seashore. We will stay there through the whole of Shabbat. And we will, we will destroy the meeting. We we will bring in loud instruments in trumpets and we'll make a noise. And we will destroy the meeting. 
եւ մենք այդպիսով այդ հավաքույթը չեղյալ տանենք I what I prayed was this Բայց ես աղոթում եի եւ հետեւյալ եմ Այսինքն oh God ասում եի ով աստված I want you to surround the stadium with a wall of fire Եվ ես ասում եի որ տեր աղոթում եմ եւ խնդրում եմ քեզ որ դու կրակի պատնեշ դնես ամբողջ այդ մարզադահլիչի շուրջը And I want you to send angels with flaming swords Եվ ես ուզում եմ որ դու հրեշտակներ ուղարկես որ կրակե թուրեր կունենան To stop these orthodox Jews Եվ որ նրանք կկարողանան այս ուղափար հրեաներին կանգնեցնել What happened Ինչ տեղի ունեցա The military were involved Բոլոր այդ ռազմական ուժերը որ ներգրավված էին They had to come Նրանք պիտի գային And they did two things. Եվ երկու բան արացին. They said we will use your buses to make a wall around the stadium. Նրանք ասացին որ այդ ավտոբուսները, որ մարդկանց տեղափոխել էին, օգտագործենք պատնեշի նման կշրջապատենք մարզադահլիճը։ So these boys can't get in. Եվ ամեն ինչ կանենք որ այս այս քահանաները չկարողանան ներս մտնել։ Then the police said we know who they are. Եվ ոստիկանեն ասում են մենք ճանաչում ենք իրենց։ The armed police with the Kalashnikovs. Եվ այս զինված ոստիկանները, այդ Kalashnikovներով rounded up all these orthodox Jews. Բոլոր այս ուղափար հրեաների հրեաներին գնացին, photographed them. Նրանց նկարեցին, took all their personal details. Նրանց բոլոր անձնական տվյալները վերցրեցին. They said if there's one disturbance in this stadium, Եվ ասացին որ եթե ինչ որ կերպով խանգարեք հավաքույթը, We don't care whether you're involved or not. Մենք կարևոր կարևոր չէ դուք ինչ որ բան արել եք թե չէ, We know who you are. Մենք ձեզ շատ լավ ճանաչում ենք. We take you straight to prison. Մենք ձեզ անմիջապես բանտ կտանենք. You see I just for a wall of fire Եվրոմ են աստված այդ կրակի պատնեշները And angels with flaming swords Պատնեշները դրեց եւ նաեւ հրեշտակներ ուղարկեց որ կրակե սուրեր ունեին God gave me a wall of buses Եվ աստված այդ ավտոբուսներով պատնեշ կառուցեց And the military Եվ ավ ռազմական ուժերը իրենց իրենց հրացաններով To stop these boys Կանգնեցին նրանց But that wasn't the end. But the devil was determined to stop me. The devil was determined to stop me. So we arrived at the stadium about two hours before. So we arrived at the stadium about two hours before. So we arrived at the stadium about two hours before. So we arrived at the stadium about two hours before. So we arrived at the stadium about two hours before. So we arrived at the stadium about two hours before. So we arrived at the stadium about two hours before. So we arrived at the stadium about two hours before. So we arrived at the stadium about two hours before. So we arrived at the stadium about two hours before. So we arrived at the stadium about two hours before. So we arrived at the stadium about two hours before. So we arrived at the stadium about two hours before. So we arrived at the stadium about two hours before. So we arrived at the stadium about two hours before. So we arrived at the stadium about two hours before. Ever seen in history on the Mediterranean coast? Եվ սա այս միջերկրական ծոցի տարածքի ամենաուժեղ փոթորիկն էր, որ երբևէ եղել էր։ Can you understand? Հասկանում եք։ They said never in history. Նրանք ասեցին, որ պատմության մեջ այսպեսի բան չի եղել։ Have we seen wind so strong? Ես էլ չէի տեսել այդպիսի ուժեղ փոթորիկ։ It did two things. Եվ երկու բան արեց։ It blew the sand until we were breathing sand. Դա այդ փոթորիկը ամբողջ ավազը բերում էր դեպի մեզ եւ մենք կարծես ավազ էինք շնչում։ And we had a big structure holding the colonies and and the television screens. Եվ ուրեմն տարբեր սարքավորումներ ունեինք, որ տարբեր ձայնային ապարատները եւ հերոսատեսության սարքերը բոլորը դրանց վրա էր միացված And the wind was making it move Եվ, one meter each side Եվ այդ քամու եւ փոթորիկի պատճառով դրանք շարժվում էին 1 մետր 1 մետր մետր տարածքով And the police said we cannot allow anybody in the stadium Եվ ոստիկանները ասացին որ չենք թույլ տա որ որևէ մեկը այդ մարզադահլիչի մեջ The whole structure will collapse Եվ ասացին, որ չենք կարող թույլ տալ մարդկանց ներս մտնել, որովհետև ամբողջ այդ շինությունը հնարավոր է որ փլվի։ And we cannot allow anybody in. Եվ չենք կարող թույլ տալ որ մարդիկ ներս մտնեն։ What could I do? Ինչ կարող էի անել? I got my intercessor. Եվ այդ ժամանակ իմ բարեխոսը I said in the name of Jesus. Որից հետ էր ասացի We're going to stop this. Եվ սկսեցի նաև աղոթել եւ ասել որ հիսուսի անունով մի բան պիտի անենք որ կանգնեցնենք We got up on the stage Մենք բարձացանք բեմի վրա And I began to pray Եվ ես սկսեցի աղոթել Oh God in the name of Jesus Ով աստված հիսուսի անունով 
2000 years ago Jesus stopped a storm on Galilee. Oh God, your power is stronger today. In the name of Jesus, I command the wind to stop. In Jesus' name, storm, go, wind, stop, now. And immediately, the wind stopped by a miracle. Thank you, by the way, for watching the program. But I want you to know more of the background behind this. And so I've written a book because I live by faith. And what I do, I do by faith. And I want to show you in this little booklet how your faith will work. Faith does work. Faith is something practical. It's not abstract. Faith is putting into practice what God teaches us. And so I want to send you this book. Look, I, I'm a sailor and I'm in front of the sea, the Mediterranean. I'm in Israel. What a place to talk about faith because Jesus was a man of faith. He taught faith. He lived faith. And I want to share some of this with you. And so in this book, it will teach you how to make your faith work. I'll send it to you free. Just send a gift, however small, right to me. And the book is yours and it will make your faith work. This is Prophetic Vision. It's the most powerful prophetic magazine in Europe today. It's read by almost half a million people in 132 countries around the world. Send for it free and let God show you the path to revival in your life, in your nation. The important thing is this, that we're able to bring you news of revival and of the power of God from right around the world in so many different countries. And also, while on the television broadcast, you only see just a short edited program of my message. On this program, you're able to see and hear the whole of the message. So I want to encourage you to watch this program.